I was going through a very rough time and uh, I got super depressed and I felt like the only thing that's ever had my back throughout my life has been music. And I've just learned to take care of myself in, and, and do things that make me feel good. When I first came to LA, I like had so many expectations and I wanted things to come out a certain way. Somebody told me that I should not, I should have no expectations. And I started doing that where it was like, instead of like building up this whole story of how like a relationship's gonna play out or a work deal or whatever, I just go into it more open. And I'm just more chill now about how the outcome is gonna be. So that's helped me a lot because if something doesn't work out the way that I want, I don't have such a crazy breakdown. And it, doesn't affect me for like a week straight emotionally. You know, my, my mental illness or issues, whatever you want to call it, um, I think it's really helped me come to this place in my life. And I think it's just made me a very insightful person. And I want to know about people in the world. And I think me having a lot of highs and lows has really um, taught me a lot about patience and people and has been able to make me a better artist. I'm always giving other people compliments and the one thing we don't do to ourselves is give ourselves compliments in our heads or tell ourselves things about, like keep reminding ourselves about our dreams. You could spend your day being like, you're gorgeous, like follow your dreams, keep doing that. When you said affirmations, I think that it helps kind of cement that positivity in your brain. I watched an Oprah episode and she said she took a check and wrote a check for a billion dollars and kept it on her mirror. Every time she would wake up, she would look at it. So I decided to do that. And I made like a big poster with all the things that I want to accomplish. Be nominated for a Grammy, which happened. First late night TV show, which happened. Sponsored branding deal, which happened. Get my own place, which happened. I think everything off that board came true. I grew up just like every other, you know, young girl watching music videos and reading magazines and seeing supermodels in magazines and wanting to look like them. And as I've grown up, um, I started to learn and being in the industry, I've learned that a lot of that stuff is not real. I think what's happening now is that there's definitely a shift of like inclusivity. Everybody's definition of perfect for their own body types is completely different. And I've just learned to love certain parts of my body. True self-love is like a love, is like a love-hate thing. You know, you wake up one day, you get, you're about to get your period, you feel bloated and you feel like complete crap and you don't want to get out of bed and you want to wear baggy clothes. I have days like that. And then I have days where I feel awesome. Ever since I hit 30, I feel I think it's been a, a, a you know an ongoing process, but you start becoming unapologetic about who you are, and you start accepting certain things about yourself, and you start loving your body more. I think that it's just been a journey of working on self love and understanding that you're not going to always feel a hundred percent every day, and that's what it makes it okay. Because if you try to run away from the feeling, the bad feelings, it kind of like magnifies it. If you just tell yourself like, listen, like. Eh, it's one of those days and you move on.